Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today, as you can see, we're going to be putting in a new garage door opener. Uh, this is an example. This, this, I'm not pushing this particular brand. This is just the one that I bought um, because uh, I did a little research and I did like what I saw about it. Um, it does come obviously with a, with a book of all your instructions, but I'm going to take you through step by step exactly what to do. Uh, this is an example of all the parts that we're going to need. Uh, this comes, everything you see here comes in the box, except for these tools over here. Everything you see comes in the box, and um, we just laid it out so we check the inventory to make sure that everything is here versus taking it apart and finding out that something is missing. Um, I will tell you this, when you turn to the first page of the instructions, it does show you everything that you're going to need to get the job done. So, as you can see, I do have everything laid out over here that we're going to be using. And um, all right, so before we do anything here, we're going to go up and we're going to take down the old garage door opener. As you can see, this is the, uh, the old unit here. So we are going to unbolt it. We are going to disconnect the power supply and I'm going to take this unit here down. We're going to leave this track here up there, that support bracket, because that's mounted to the beams. And then we're going to take down everything you see from here over to the garage door itself. So let's take all this down. And once we have it down, we'll come back and we'll start to put this new unit up. Okay, so now we laid out our, uh, our, our motor on the side here. We, we now the next step we're going to do is we're going to join these, these uh, uh, pipes together. Um, as you will see, one of them is different than the rest. This one, the end is cut out like this, where the other ones are all the exact same. The other four are the same. This one is the one that's actually at the very end by the door itself, so this one needs to be all the way close to the door and this tab right here needs to be facing up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these sections here and we're going to join them together like this. We just slide together and push them. And they lock in place just like that. Now we'll do the exact same thing with all four of them. We're going to put a, just a piece of packing material that we use to pack it. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take on, the, on this head unit itself with the motor in it. We're going to attach this part here onto here. So we're going to take out these two screws right here. They're half inch, just so you know. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we take the, uh, the trolley section. And there's only one way that this goes on because we need to actually connect into this point right here with the belt and the, and the, uh, the uh, adjustment. So we're going to take this now, we're going to put it on here just like this, and we're going to slide it all the way down. We're just going to take a screwdriver like this, we just put it in there for a minute, we'll slide this down to here, and now we're going to take our bracket here, and we'll take it like this, put it in here, and we're going to just not push it in until it snaps in place. Take these screws out here that we previously loosened up. Now we just line these up. And we're going to catch both of these bolts by hand first. Make sure you screw them in by hand. You don't want to cross thread them. And now we'll snug these bolts down. Ok, 
Okay, so now that's tight. Our trolley is on here, and now we'll, uh, we're going to we're going to take this bracket here, and this bracket, we're going to mount it up over the top of the, uh, of the garage door in the header itself. And that I'm going to do because it's going to be a little different. Um, when you read the directions, it tells you that you should mount it directly to the wood. In this particular case, you can see my other garage door here. It has the, uh, the steel on there, so we are going to attach that bracket directly to the steel, so that's actually for re extra reinforcement. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to attach this bracket, and then once we get this bracket up on there, we'll come back and then we'll continue here. Okay, now as you can see, I did mount this bracket up here, and like I told you, it's reinforced with the uh, angle iron here, so I chose to keep the angle iron as an extra reinforcement here. So this is bolted on, and now I, I did check the height to make sure that it was going to be the, the, the distance from the head of the uh, the ceiling down to the top of the rail here that there was adequate clearance when the door came up to the uh, to the top position so all right let's come over okay I want to explain how you uh, determine the height of where you put that mounting bracket on the header the way you do it is you bring the garage door up until it's at its highest point when it gets to its highest point which is where it is located now we actually measure from here all the way back to the, to the header itself, and we put a line on the header. So what we would do is we would sit this on the top of the garage door such as this, and we would just level this until it's level. We put a mark on the header over here, and then once we put the mark on the header, then we just measure up two inches from that mark on the header, measure up two inches, and that's where we mount the, uh, the bracket onto it so that the, the track will actually be two inches above the high point of the, uh, the garage door itself. All right, so uh, let me get this up over here now, and we're going uh, to assemble it up on the bracket here. So let's continue right there. Okay, now remember what I said. We put our mark of where it was going to be, and we mounted it now where the, uh, uh, we, we wanted it to be. So now this track is, is two inches higher than, the, than the, when the garage door comes up to open up. So that's how that's mounted. Let's continue on the other side. Okay, so the bolts now here are tightened up. We are gonna take this small bolt here, and we're gonna put it right through here, like this, and then we're gonna take our lock nut here, that's provided. We're gonna put it on here, and we're gonna tighten it up. Tough to do it uh, with just one hand. We just tighten it up here, and now we're gonna grab a wrench, we're going to snug this in place, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over and grab that belt, and we're going to stretch that belt on. Okay, now we're just going to take off our belt, and we're going to take the, 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 uh, the belt itself that has a connector on the end of it, and if you look at the directions, it tells you that this hook piece has to go through here, like this. We're going to come through approximately a foot, and then we're going to take our pulley, we're going to put our pulley in here like this. We're going to take our bolt and slide it through like that. And then we're going to connect up the washer and the nut. Screw it on like this. Now we're going to take this down to the other end. Let's stretch this belt out a little bit here. Take this down to the other end. belt on like this. Now I gotta take this piece here and open this package up here. Now we just unscrew this piece like this. 
Now this piece has got to be connected to here. So we're going to take our master link and we're going to connect it on there. So we're going to open up this package right here, take our master link out. Take our link, put it through here. This piece goes on here like this. We slide this on here, and then we lock it on with this. I'll tell you this, be careful because if this link goes flying, you're going to have a, uh, a problem because you don't know where it's going to go. So we just lock the master link on like this. And then we're going to make sure our belt is on straight and that it's not twisted at all. So we're going to pull it straight. We're going to pull it around our motor here like this. We're going to go through here. So this flat part needs to go against that flat part right there. So we're going to take it, put it through here like this. And now we're going to take our adjuster and we're going to screw it on. And we're just going to screw it down until it touches in here. Okay, so now that we have this turned on by hand, you're going to tighten this, uh, this spring assembly on as tight as you can by hand. You're not going to use any wrenches on it to tighten it up. What you do is just tighten it by hand and then what you do is you come in here with a small screwdriver and right here there's a little notch in here. You take the screwdriver and you put it into the notch like this and then we're going to rotate this so that that locks in place. What this does, now that this is tight by hand, this will actually apply pressure to the belt at the right tension so you're not going to wear out the belt or break the belt or overload the belt. Alright, so we're going to come in here with this um, flat and then we just rotate the nut until it snaps in and now it's locked in place. We can take this out and now the belt is, you can see that the tension is being adjusted by that spring right there. Alright, I will tell you this, be very careful here because this side is flat, there's only one way that this bolt can go in there so make sure you put it in correctly all right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down the other end over here. This bolt that was in here, I did tighten this bolt up. What it says in the directions is tighten it until you see the washer, the, uh, the lock washer is collapsed all the way. Don't over tighten it because you could destroy the pulley or damage the pulley or cause too much of a drag on the pulley. All right, then what we're going to do is we're going to come up over here and this piece here is a safety. So that way the garage door opener doesn't open too far and wind up damaging this over here. So you just take this and you bend it down like this. And now that keeps the trolley from going too far past there. All right, so that's finished here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up on the top over here by the motor itself. We're going to take our cover. This goes over the top, just like that. Our three screws are actually in the package right here as well. They are three Phillips head screws, just so you know. We're going to screw each one of them in by hand. We're not going to tighten anything yet. I will tell you this, don't use on any of these screws here, do not use any impact or any kind of air powered or electric powered um, tool to tighten it up. Tighten it up with a uh, ratchet by hand yourself so you don't strip it out because if these two screws strip out, it won't tighten up and this unit will be no good. Now this is on, it's nice and tight. 
the unit is all put together. All right, so let's, um, as I showed it before, I do have it on top of something so we didn't wind up scratching the unit while we were working with it. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have the, uh, the motor assembly sitting on top of a table. Uh, we have something underneath it so we don't damage it. We are going to take this now. We're going to lift it up to that piece that I mounted up on the wall. We're going to take the one and a half inch pin that they supply, and we're going to put that pin through and we're going to lock it in place. So we're going to lift this up here, put it up there, lock it in place, and then we're going to come back over to this end over here. pin from coming out. Okay, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put our unit up over here and we're going to see how it lines up. Okay, so now we have it attached up in the front. We're going to take this, we're going to lift it up to our brackets and then we're going to put the bolts through and then we'll tighten it up. Okay, let me tighten up these bolts once they're tight and we'll come back and we'll finish this job off. Okay, now we have our track mounted up in the front. We actually put our level on top of the track itself and we made sure that the level is exactly centered. If it's off a tiny little bit, it's not a big deal, but you want to try to get it as close to level as possible. So what I did is I put this level on here and I raised up the, uh, the motor assembly here and secure it up there. Let me show you. So now our motor assembly is nice and straight from here all the way to there. We actually centered this channel directly in the middle of the garage door. We put our bracket back here and we secured it onto the, uh, to the motor itself. So we're all set right here. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to come down here and we're going to put the, uh, the sensors on the door. So let me grab them and we'll continue. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to come over here. We're going to come up underneath the trolley right here that actually moves the door open and closed. We're going to release this, pull this this way, and let's slide it all the way to the door. of it because that's what was on the previous one because this bracket is the bracket I'm going to be reusing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it through here. We're going to put a nut on the top of it and we're going to tighten that nut. Snug the nut down. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to attach the uh, attach the two together. So we're going to hold this up here. And the, the part that's actually rounded is actually facing out this way. And the two flat parts here 
are coming together. So we're going to do that. We'll put our bolt through here like this. We're going to put our washer and nut on the other side here and screw it down hand tight only like that. We're going to do the exact same thing here with the uh, with the other one. nice and tight now. We're just going to leave this like that. We're going to connect our emergency release rope right here. And this is quite simple. We just basically just put this through here, the eyelid, like that. And then we can just tie a knot in the end of it here. Like that. And then we're going to take the handle itself. Exact same thing here. Tie a knot in it, and that is our emergency release. We may shorten it up a little bit because that's a little bit too long, but that's a good height right there. So now we had to release it. You would just pull it, and you could release the trolley if needed. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually take the sensors and the brackets and we're going to mount them on the doors and we're going to run the wires up to the unit here. So uh, let's continue with that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take our, our uh, sensor brackets and we're going to put them on like this. The way that they go on is you just put it over the top like this and you push so this piece snaps behind the channel right here. Just like that. Now, I will point this out to you. You want this bracket to be the same height as the bracket on the other side. So what we do is we measure it just to make sure that it's actually centered where it's supposed to be. So we're going to measure here, and we're going to measure, and we're going to put the bracket on the other side in the exact same height. Okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our sensors. We're going to take our sensors and connect that up. And the way you get the sensor onto the uh, onto here is you take your bolt like this that's actually square right on the bottom right there. I don't know if you can see that. You slide it in here like that, right? And now we want our sensor pointing that direction because you can see the eye right here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our sensor, we're going to put it on here like this, and then we'll catch the little wing nut we'll tighten the wing nut up here now I'm not going to bore you with this but I'm going to take these wires here and I'm going to run them up to the head unit with the motor so uh, let me attach this other sensor to the other side we'll run the wires and then we'll come right back Okay, now you can see how the wires run over here now. And what we're going to do is we strip them apart like this, and the wires are actually different colors. If you look in your book, it'll tell you which wires are which. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the two sensors from the doors, and we're going to turn them together here, and we're going to put it in here and here. And then we have the switch that's mounted on the wall, which is the red, the red and the white, and we're going to mount it in the red here and the white here. All right, so uh, let's do that. We just took a razor blade and we split the wire down the middle like that. Then we use a pair of wire strippers and we strip the wire.
all four of them. Actually, we might as well do all six while we're in here. So we're going to take the red and the white, put it to the side. We're going to take our white and black, and we're going to take our white and black, cross them over each other like that, and then twist them together. Like that. And then we're going to take the white and the white and do the exact same thing. Cross them over like this and twist them together. Like that. Now we're going to take the white. We're going to take the white and black and put it into the gray right here. You just push down that little tab right there and you insert the wire into it. And you let go of the tab, and you'll see it stuck right in. We'll do the same thing with the white. Push that little tab down, push it in, and let go of the tab. Make sure the two of them are in there. And you can see that they're both in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our white wire, put our white wire in here, push that tab down. We're going to take our red wire and put our red wire into the red piece here. Push that tab down. Make sure all your wires are in there nice and tight. And you see they are. Okay, now we're going to put a light bulb in here and then we're going to wire up the switch itself. But let me show you how I did the doors. You put your, your sensor on the door like this, mount it on there, and then we put our little clips in here to hold it in place. We're going to put a few more in here. We ran it up around the top, over to this side here, right down through the center like that, and then right over to the unit itself. And then the other one, we did the exact same thing. We went down that side, all the way down to there. Okay, the last thing we did, now, the last thing we did is we ran our wire, the white with the red, over to this wall here, and we are going to wire this switch in here now. So, uh, all right, let me put a light bulb in the unit and we'll come right back. Okay, the next thing we did is we determined where we wanted to mount the new uh, controller. As you can see, the one screw here is slotted, so we screwed this screw in here so that this will slide over the top of it and then we'll open that up and put our last screw right through the top right there. Alright, so um, we're going to connect our wires up here. This is the white and this is the red. You can see the red is here and this is the white. So we're going to connect those two wires up. We'll mount this up and then we're going to get this door running. Now I will tell you this, they do come with mollies that you can put in here, but behind this wall right here, there is a stud right here, so we don't need to use a molly. But if it was a hollow wall, then at that point you'd have to use a molly to screw the screw in. Okay, so now that we have everything wired the way it's supposed to be here, we made sure our connections are here. We put our wires up in here so they're not going to interfere with anything. And now we're going to plug our, uh, our plug in, and then we're going to program the, uh, the remote to uh, open and close the garage. So uh, let me reach over and plug this in. You want to make sure your plug is not near anything so that it's not touching into anything here. You can see it's out of the way. All right, now we're going to do our programming. Now to program this unit, it's fairly easy. You basically just come in here and you press this button until this light starts to flash. Press it, hear it beep, 
And now we're going to hold this button until the door gets up as far as we want it to be up. All right, and you can just press it and release it. If it's not the right height, you can press and release and it goes higher. Right there. And then after you have it set, you press this button again. It beeps and flashes, of course. And then you hold this and it'll go down as far as it's supposed to go. And then when it gets to the bottom where you want it to be, you release that button again. Okay, and now, once it's down as far as you want it, if you want it a little lower, you just press it again, and it'll go down a little lower. Once you have it set the way you want it, you press this, it flashes, and that's it. You're pretty much all set and programmed. Okay, now we're going to test our, uh, our remote. And it should stop when it gets to the top position again. And I'm going to close it. And that's it. One last thing we're going to test. Okay, I know that you know that this is an emergency release right here, but if you had to, uh, for some reason, if you had an emergency and you needed to release the door, you just pull this handle and it releases, right? And then to close the hand, to, to uh, reactivate it again, just take it this way and you pull it. And now, and now the door will come back in, but you'll have to go up slightly to get it to connect into it. So we're gonna put it up and it locks in. Okay, now I want to show you this. These sensors that we installed here, if these sensors are working correctly, you should have one that's uh, like a yellow or amber color, and the other one should be green right here. So if you have any problems and they're not amber and green, then you know there's a problem. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to test it to make sure it works. When this door is going down, if this beam was to be broken, the door should reverse and go back up. So let's check it. Right. So now the door is coming down. If the beam is broken, this door should reverse. And you can see it did. That's it. We'll be all set. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go outside and we're going to put that keypad on the outside. But again, that directions are in here for you as well. All right, that's it. We're all done. All right, so uh, this project is finished and on to the next one. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.